Okay, let me stick to Kenneth. Mm. Something just came to my mind about mm. the oil spill in the Niger Delta. You tried to mention that before now. <coughs> Excuse me. And that <coughs> we've seen a lot of interventions from those oil uh, companies uh, in, that, in those areas, Shell and, and all others. Uh, but it seems to see the impact has not been felt by the community. What do you think in that scenario, mm. what do you think is responsible for such uh, issue? If you take the Niger Delta case, um as a scenario, what you would say that is a complete uh, uh, so government failure. Okay, mm -hmm. so sometimes in the bid to promote corporate social responsibility, you there is that um, unintended desire to see companies bear the burden of society. So CSR, as much as it's a voluntary activity, also needs to be complemented mm -hmm. by strong institutions. Yeah. Companies cannot solve all the problems mm -hmm. of the world. So what is what you see happening in the Nigerian data is partly a problem of governance failure. And governance here would include the public sector, the government. It would also include the civil society. So, and also businesses. So they also need to come together to work and collaborate with each other. And that's what you find happening in other parts of the world. When you had the uh, Gulf of Mexico oil spill, and Obama came out and said, um, BP must pay the last dime. And th that, that oil yeah. spill was stopped. But we don't see that happen in our country. Yeah, because you see a strong government, a strong institution, a strong civil society that is also able to hold governments accountable. So the, one of the problems we see here is that even the local communities are kind of subordinate to the, to the big multinational firms. And these most big multinational firms by, are by no means small. Some of them are richer and stronger than some countries. Mm. Okay, so it's that you can see some kind of power imbalance there. Mm -hmm. So you need a strong government that is able to contain their excesses. Can we link this to the issue of corruption as well, in the process of having to solve, you know, such problems, especially in the Niger Delta? Do you think there are, there is an element of corruption in that as well? Corruption is an outcome of a weak institution. Mm -hmm. Put it that way. So, um, as much as corruption can also undermine institutions. Um, but I think it goes beyond co corruption. I will see it as a governance problem. Okay. And in that governance problem, you can see the, uh, the, the oil and gas companies probably lobbying very hard to capture the government. Okay, so when we talk about corruption, it's two-sided in the sense that you have the public sector actor, you also have the private sector actor, but when they come together, they create this monster we call corruption. Okay, uh, Adoto, I just want to ask you, how are the Nigerian firms faring in terms of CSR, okay. if you want to rate us, okay. because I know you're a practitioner yourself, how will you describe our role in corporate social responsibility? Well, I think that, um, as, as Dr. Amesha said, it's voluntary, so that the fact that some do it most is commendable. Um, but I honestly feel that there's a long way for us to go, and, and I'll take from the example of the, you know, the role of private sector and the role of a, of, of a public sector in, in a particular instance, um, youth. Uh, we know that we have very high rates of unemployment right now. We have social actors, we have social partners, we have development partners, but I think that we're still technically working in silos as a country. And I'll give two examples. Um, I know that the U.S. State Department just put together, I mean, they've put an, an alliance for young people together. It's, it, it, youth unemployment is something that needs to be solved. We need to come together. In, in I think CSR is... We cannot afford to continue to work in silos. The, the spending dollars that we, the, the money that's put together, we can create a force for good and, and create synergies. I know that the, the UK recently put together the youth contract, uh, where businesses are coming to the table, civil society is at the table, and we have a focus. I think what's happening in Nigeria is you have a company, I just want to focus on health, I want to focus on education, and they do their own thing, they run their own way, they put their own monitoring boards, and you know, they, they've ticked the, bus, the box that we've, you know, we've, we've created some measure of impact. But we can create a, a stronger force Force. We can collaborate and we can, you know, minimize the effect of coordination. There's a lack of coordination and we can get, you know, um, we're not going to build an ideal society, but we can at least move. And I think that's a role of thought leadership, if I, if I was going to drill it down. If we had a space where the most pressing needs in society, people are aware of the most pressing needs. Let me give an example. A couple of weeks ago, I was on YouTube, YouTube and I saw a spoof of an interview, a young person, and we all laughed and we had a good laugh. And I remember sending it to, 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 my, to my staff and saying, you know what, this company is a, very, is a leading bank. They're doing fantastically well. They've made us laugh, but you know, there's, we can also propose to them that as opposed to having us laugh at a young guy who's gone across an interview table and made a mess of it, it can, we can create much good and we can create much impact by 
also getting them to record how young people can do well and be competitive across an interview table. Mm. So it's, it's still, you know, um, at the level of thought leadership, at the level of awareness of what the needs of society, the real needs of society are, and getting all of us at the same table and creating the change that our society needs. So okay, that's all. I'll, I'll just stick with you. Yeah. What level of partnership do you think is required? Because you've mentioned that there's a, a number of groups, yeah. but to what extent can these groups really assist the company to you know get involved in its corporate re social responsibility i think it's it's you know um th there's a role of leadership as well and there's a role for, for visioning as well who are we as a country and where we're we trying to get to especially in the field that i work with youth and the fact that our youth are not as and competitive you know employability is something that um most countries realize that you cannot you cannot you know you've got to use it to secure stability young people are not engaged you will you know stability will be an issue economic growth will be an issue so when you say i know that i've been at, at an event in abuja where the president had gotten all the business sector together and but maybe we need to be more consistent maybe we need to be more transparent maybe we need to be also um, more focused on look there's a problem we need to solve it okay kenneth <coughs> I want to know because I know that from from the look of things, we, we don't really get to see new businesses or small businesses, so to speak, get involved in CSR. It's only the big names. How do you think the small business owner can also help? Perhaps he or she just uh, has been operating in an environment for the for part, for five years. Um, how do you think that business can help assist the environment that you sh the, the, the business is operating in? Yes, going back again to, if you use the word assist or help, you know, you tend to suggest that it's something extra. So it goes back to what I was saying about businesses need to build it into their core purpose. And the idea that CSR is the, is the preserve of the rich companies uh, or big companies, I would you know, um, argue against that. Because once you set up as a company, either as a micro enterprise or as an SME, you invariably have an, an impact on society, even in terms of the products you, you sell to the, to the, to the community. Um, and if you take the example of, say, um, the late Otumba Gaddafi, who started the shit business, you know, he was a social entrepreneur. There is also space for small companies who might want to engage in that social entrepreneurship as their core business and as a way to promote a better society. So in that sense, um, CSR becomes uh, a question of what value can we add to society generally and what can I, what, how can my uh, personal entrepreneurship as a small business contribute to that greater good. Mm. So I I in a way, it's not a problem. It's not something that should be left for the big businesses, but it's also a way of helping entrepreneurs. And one thing I want to point out also is that how our entrepreneurs are trained is also very important. So if you turn entrepreneurs who are always on the survival mode, mm. because they're always chasing the bottom line and they want to survive as individuals, they lose that broader agenda of the role of entrepreneurship in societal development. Mm. Okay, if, if you have enough time, we'll get back to this capacity yeah. issue. Yeah. But let me get to our detail. Um, <clears throat> I just want to ask you, I understand there's a Social Responsibility Act. Uh, to what extent are we operating under the act and what does it really until for businesses in the country? So, are you sure that's not a doctor question for doctor himself? Well, um, as I said, I think we just got a, we've got a long way to go. Um, we don't have a perfect society. Um, we're not going to save the world. But um, in terms of processes, in terms of coordination, we've, we've just got a long way to go. Yeah. Okay, that, that, let, me get back, let me get back to Kenneth. <laughs> this act, what does it mean? And how should businesses work in line with that? Um, I don't know the art you're talking about, but I know there is um, a, an interest to push the corporate um, CSR bill okay. um, through this other Senate or one of what they, So, um, and there is always this debate in terms of should CSR be regulated, should it be compulsory? There are some countries, um, say, I think it's I don't know, one of the Scandinavian countries where it has been adopted. Uh, in the UK, for example, one of the things they're trying to pilot, especially looking at the big companies, for them to report on their impacts on society. So. Um, Making CSR compulsory, if you ask me, is more like a double taxation, mm. uh, as long as it's a voluntary activity. But we need to strengthen our already existing laws. Nigeria is not short of laws. Okay, so it's a question of implementation. Mm -hmm. And once these laws are strengthened and implemented, probably we will curtail some of the things that would require the CSR bill to do anyway. Mm. So CSR becomes then an opportunity for firms to differentiate themselves and compete as opposed to um, the minimum standard required. Okay, in terms of re regulation, uh, let me just stick to 
kind of regulation, do you think that would be, you mentioned that it's likened to double taxation. But do you think the government is trying to say that perhaps the, 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 the companies are doing too much <laughs> in that regard? What are they trying to say by regulating CSR? I don't know if you put it, I mean, if you look at sometimes what we expect of companies to do, um, to a large extent, they tend to suggest that the government is pulling back, retreating. Mm. And you don't want the government to retreat when it comes to the provision of social infrastructure, for example. The companies are there to uh, make money and add value to society, but they also need to be complemented. Get that question of complementarity. The, the, the uh, government has a role to play by providing the enabling environment for businesses to thrive, and this will include the provision of both physical and social infrastructure, maintaining the rule of law, providing skills, um, like Deton has been talking about. So all this need to come together in order to help the companies perform. And here, mind you, we're not talking about only creating Nigerian companies, but we're also thinking of how we can help Nigerian companies to become international and become global firms. So I don't think um, having laws that will stifle them in Nigeria will be to the great ad advantage of Nigeria. Now, Adetone, do you think that uh, CSR somehow grows the economy? Because if it's something voluntary uh, on the part of the companies and uh, it's something that they do extra just to assist, so to speak, how does it grow our economy? Do you think it has any impact at all? I think the spend itself grows the economy. The fact that you know there's there's uh, financial activity going on. Um, if you look at the if you look at the um, reporting of some foundations in this country, they're spending a lot of dollars on a lot of naira um, in that in the sector. I mean, making sure that uh, civil so civil society actors have the the necessary. Um, and one of the things I like to, to correct is that CSR or giving of money to civil society, so it's not the it's not the be all and the do all. Sometimes just improving the capacity of those actors in the civil society to do what they do. For example, um, if we're going to look at the policies that guide certain sectors, are there lobbyists in that country who, who is supporting them to do what they do and do it well? So we have more functional institutions or we have more functional policies. So it's beyond just the spend. And, and a lot of times what you find that goes down to people saying they're doing CSR is a lot of jamborees and a lot of sometimes exciting things. But we really have to create a shift and say, you know what, we've got to be able to do a lot more um, as you know collectively mm. okay, like yeah. do you think the economy grows through CSR in a way it's difficult to say because um, here we are looking at the impact you know mm. talking about CSR impact is a very difficult challenge but you can also see a situation situations where CSR becomes a problem Take, for example, you're, a hosp you're a, an oil and gas company, you build a hospital for a local community, and that hospital becomes the source of conflict mm -hmm. in that society. So on one hand, you may say, well, I've done something good, but on the other hand, you have destabilized the society. Mm -hmm. So the, the issue of impact is very tricky, and I think people who are engaging in CSR as philanthropy in Nigeria uh, needs to probably rethink what they mean by impact and, and that possible engagement. Well, I think at this point I have to uh, let you go. Thank you so much you for much. coming on the program. We've been talking about corporate social responsibility, and we've, we've been talking to uh, Dr. Kenneth Amishi. He is the director Sustainable Business Initiative, University of Edinburgh uh, Business School. And uh, we've been talking to Adito Ogwa as well. She is the Executive Director, After School Graduate Development Center. We're going to break now, and when we come back, it's time to look at state agriculture development. Please stay with us. <laughs>